Okay, this is uh, Paul, also known as the Unit 63. Typically heard on lower sideband. Um, so I, um, I decided to make uh, a, a four element Yagi beam from scratch. Because uh, I wanted to do it. And uh, actually, um, Audio Man 288 inspired me with his video. So much thanks to him, much thanks to um, some of the other folks out there on the internet, as well as my friend Justin262 uh, from Fort Jackson, South Carolina. He's uh, He's been really helpful. He turned me on to uh, where I got all this uh, aluminum tubing from a scrap yard, recycle yard. Uh, that's all they have over there is aluminum um, at this facility. We're in Columbia, South Carolina. So um, what I was gonna do, since so many guys were asking me, uh, hey, what's the design of that thing? Uh, I figured I'd uh, share. I got about a 1.4 SWR on this. All right, we don't have any matching system on it. Um, we're about five feet off the ground, as you can see, on a one and five ace mast. Uh, we got a garage over here. Um, you know, I think right now I'm pointed south. That's uh, the second director element so pointed south um, so uh, they say we get it up on the house up on the roof we should uh, SWR should go down and by the way guys I've been talking all over the place um, pointing this thing uh, this direction which is uh, actually northeast talking to the folks up there and, and they're telling me I'm, I'm giving them 20 30 DB when the skips really rolling so this is on the flat side horizontal, as you can see. So let's get into the components we have right here. Uh, this is actually three quarter inch uh, diameter tubing, 125 thousandths wall thickness. Um, the boom is one and a half inch aluminum. I think it's a one eighth inch wall thickness. So I have an end cap on here. Uh, secured by some um, Mako five eighths tubing clamps, as you could see, and a heavy-duty zip tie. I actually had to widen those clamps. That was probably the hardest part of the job. I had to widen the clamps because it's three-quarter tubing, didn't fit perfect, and that was a little bit of work. And you got the saddle U-bolts, you can see. So that's your one and a half boom. That's 14 feet, eight inches, I believe. May have to double check that, sorry. Um, but I'll give you all the dimensions here in a little bit. And here is the number one director element. You can see the clamp. Very inexpensive clamps. The U-bolt, the saddle clamp part of it, as well as the uh, element clamp. And here is the mast. That's a one and five eighths diameter, about eighth inch thickness wall. And I got the plate. Um, I think I might have got it from Antenna Parts. I'll give you all the information, guys. Uh, anything I didn't get at the scrapyard, like the hardware, you know, the clamps and everything, I'll give you all the details. There's the U-bolts. Had to go out and get some special ones. I needed the longer. I needed the three inch, one and three quarters, which goes around the one and five ace pipe and one and three quarter pipe pretty pretty well. And I needed it because uh, the other ones that actually came with the uh, the U-bolts that came with the saddles and everything are actually a little bit too short. So um, let me see if I can show you here. Yeah, the plate's about a quarter inch. And you can see I got a little bit to play there. So that's that. This one here is the direct feed element. So this does not have a gamma match on it or any kind of a hairpin match uh, to get your SWRs down. Uh, the design came from uh, Bill Lambert. I had to alter it a little bit. Uh, the reflector element and the direct feed element are uh, about five to, I think seven to 10 inches closer than what Audio Man had shown because the boom um, is actually, I think it's 14 feet. Let me take a look. Exactly, so that I can tell you guys. 14 feet, 10 inch boom. 
Let me just make sure of that. Yeah, 14 feet, 10 inch, 178 inches on the boom. By the way, that plate um, over there, that's a six by seven inch um, mounting plate, I believe. But anyways, it's quarter inch thick. Um, again, this is direct feed element or the driver element. This one here's about, it's 205 inches, 205. The first uh, the director there um, is 194 and a half inches. And then the, um, the other one, I guess you can call that the number two director. I'm not sure, but you know, that's how I'm gonna refer to it. Um, that's the shortest uh, director element in the front there. That is 183 inches. And you have to mount these, uh, these elements right on the center of the, 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 uh, the boom. So center the elements uh, right on the boom. We don't want one side being longer than the other. And again, I have to spend a little time on this direct feed here for you guys. Um, you can see that's cut, the tubing's cut. Uh, so we're keeping the, uh, the power side or the positive side right there uh, separate from the ground side. So what we did, or what I did, was I took a piece of coax, 10 inches, with a PL259 connector, and I split it open, and then I took the ground mesh wire, and I put it right there, kind of twisted it up real neat, tight, and then I put a um, shrink wrap on it, and then I connected it right here. Uh, you can see that with a uh, crimp connector, um, and then wrapped it real tight, tightened it with a clamp, that's a hose clamp. Um, I think it's like a three quarters or seven eighths diameter hose clamp up to one inch. Did the same thing over here to the center core. There you go. Crimp connector, center core, copper. This is LMR 400. It's about 400 thousandths, 405 thousandths in diameter coax. Um, and then we used a uh, hose clamp here, same one. Uh, also, put some hose clamps. Uh, you can see the center, the blue, let me get that there, that's hose. That's actually pneumatic hose, uh, five inch, five eighths diameter uh, on the outside diameter and one half inch inside diameter. Wraps around a 40, I think it's about 43, 44 inch um, fiberglass rod that we have uh, between the two elements that we cut. You can see, and I also have some hose clamps right there where it clamps the end. And I also also uh, buttered the um, I buttered the um, fiberglass rod, and I'll show you what they look like here in a minute. With uh, JB Weld, the cold weld, that uh, so it's got the two part mix. Uh, so I buttered the 43 inch, 44 inch fiberglass rod before I inserted it into the um, three-quarter inch uh, tubing aluminum that has eighth inch wall so it fit in there pretty good and I just had to kind of clean up any excess and as you can see we have the U-bolt the saddle clamp and we have the 5 ace Mako uh, element clamp that goes over um, the tubing uh, or over the uh, the hose, sorry, over the uh, pneumatic hose, which kind of acts as a cushion and everything. Uh, works out pretty well. Uh, the space between the elements, you know, the, the two metal elements there, the two pipe, five and a half inches. So that's the length of that hose, five and a half inches. And I got a couple clamps on it uh, to clamp, just to give it some security or the pipe and the hose uh, slash fiberglass rod come together. I think you guys can see that. Hopefully you can. Okay. Uh, that coax feeder, so right here, if I can get on this right here, here we go. This here, that's a 10 inch piece of coax with a PL259 right there. I have a barrel connector with two females um, because I used uh, LMR 400 with an end connector already 
uh, pre-made. We were in the cellular business, so we use a lot of end connectors, and I had some. So uh, this barrel here, you just get a PL259 barrel, if that's what you have, if you have PL259 male connectors. Uh, but this is a PL, uh, this is a barrel here is PL259 on this side, because that's what this is. And it's an end connector female on this side, PL259 connector on that side, and a end connector female on the other side of the barrel. And then you just connect your coax like we did right here. You see that. So I think I told you the length right here from the end of that connector all the way to here to there is, let's see if I can get this, uh, it's 10 inches. Same thing over here. Shrink wrapped over there. So that's that on the that's it on the uh, direct feed element. I think we said one and a half inch boom. Here's your real long one. That's your reflector. I'll give you some direct. I'll give you some dimensions here. There we go. Just to kind of recap the uh, the driven element or the direct feed. Um, if you add up uh, this side, the pipe or the tube, three-quarter inch tube, um, that's 99 and three-quarter inches. Uh, that's how the, that's how long that tube length is, each one of them. And then the center, right there, that's five and a half inches, in essence. The hose, five and a half inches. So those, those dimensions, they total about a total of 205 inches. So that element is 205 inches long. The reflector is the long one. Um, that reflector is 221 inches and a quarter. 221 and a quarter. So we, uh, you know, we kind of split it right down the center. Um, so we're basically at... You know, 110 and a half, uh, give or take, a uh, 16th of an inch. So right around there, split right down the middle. So like right. So that's what you do. You mount the elements so that, you know, it's right on the center. And you try to make sure they're level. Um, again, I'll call that director element one closest to the direct feed. Um, and that's uh, the distance, uh, right, the, or the, the length of that one. 194 and, uh, and a half inches, basically. 194 and a half inches, split it in two, and then you got the first one or the second one over there, the other director at the end or at the front of it, if you want. That's 91 and a half inches to the center. It's 183 inches long, 183. So that's how that works. Um, I think my battery's getting a little low in the phone. But I um, also wanted to show you this. This is the, uh, the rod. This is actually 3 8 rod here. Uh, we didn't use it. We used half inch, but kind of gives you an idea. It is a 40, I think it's 40, you get it in 43 inches fiberglass. And that's what's in the center over there. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I did try to add some end caps, kind of drove the FD SWRs up a little bit, the end caps at the end of the elements here. So I, I decided not to do that. Uh, and uh, went with the three-quarter tubing because that's all they had. Um, I think uh, Audio Man 288 was using half-inch um, uh, tubing. But I could not get the lengths that I needed. They didn't have anything long enough. So I went with the three quarter. As it turns out, uh, they're pretty beefy. Uh, so I got to really be, you know, they're a little heavier than the half inch. But it doesn't hurt you. You got the heavier wall. You got the more metal. Uh, I just got more radiated material here. So it's just it's going to be a little heavier. Um, but typically, you know, you're not going to get these from a, uh, you know, a manufacturer like Mako and those guys, because they, they have to make the elements kind of short, I think up to seven feet or so, eight feet. That's the most for shipping purposes. Uh, so usually they give you about a seven or eight foot element and you, you, you pop in, you know, it's five ace. 
Uh, then you pop in two, uh, you know, six, seven footers on the ends that are half inch into the tube. You slide them in. So these are, this is a really solid beam. I mean, it really is a, it's kind of a beast. Uh, my first one. So we've already tested it and um, it's working well. So I'll, I'll give you guys all the information that you need. I'll have a document that I can send to you. Um, the Gmail address is unit 63 sc like south carolina at gmail.com uh, all you gotta do is uh, send me an email and i'll send it to you i'll send you the document with all the dimensions and where i got the uh the parts i i had to buy like all the clamps and you know um the accessories that i was talking about and then you guys wouldn't have to track it down in the companies i bought them from so because i really shopped it and looked for it and some places had it some didn't so Hope you enjoyed it. Um, look forward to your comments too. Uh, so this is the Unit 63, Columbia, South Carolina, half wave, four element Yagi. Thanks a lot.